Hi, I'm John Paul of the blog Pementor.com. In previous videos, we discussed the key features of the SEPA instant credit transfer, like the maximum execution time, the availability and optionality. Now, we want to see what happens during the processing of a SEPA instant credit transfer. For that purpose, we will look at the four corner model for the SCT instant, which highlights the main players involved in the funds transfer process. It will allow us to see the main steps of the process and the information flow to carry it out. In its most common form, the SCT INS transfer involves four main players, the originator and his bank, the originator bank, the beneficiary and his bank, the beneficiary bank, and the clearing and settlement systems that interconnect the two banks, as we can see on the picture. The main steps for processing the necessity inst have been numbered in the figure. There are eight steps in total, and we will present them one after another. The first step is the sending of the SCT instant instruction to the originator bank by his customer, the originator. The originator can use different channels like a smartphone or an e-banking portal for that purpose. He must provide beneficiary information, amount, and other information so that the order can be processed by the bank. The second step is the triggering event for the originator bank, the receiving of the SCT instruction from its customer. When the originator bank receives an SCT instant order, it must process it immediately. It applies all the necessary checks to determine that the instruction meets all mandatory attributes for interbank processing and the processing conditions of the originator bank. In case all the checks are successful, the originator bank makes a funds reservation on the originator's account and prepares the SCT instant transaction. After that, the bank puts a timestamp in the transaction. The timestamp marks the starting point in time of the execution time cycle of the SCT in transaction that we discussed in a previous video. Now the bank can send the transaction to its clearing system. In step three, we are in the clearing system. The CSM performs all the necessary technical and functional checks and forwards the SCT in transaction to the beneficiary bank. In case there's any problem, the CSM may reject the transaction and send a negative confirmation message to the originator bank. And that will be the end of the process. But we assume that all goes well so that we can look at the next steps. So the transaction is forwarded successfully to the beneficiary bank. In step four, the beneficiary bank sends a confirmation message to the clearing system. That confirmation message can be positive or negative, but few things happen before. When the beneficiary bank receives the SCT INS transaction from the CSM, it performs all the controls to see if it can apply the SCT INS transaction to the beneficiary's account. The beneficiary account should exist, be open, and all the conditions should be met to credit that account. If all goes well, the beneficiary bank sends a positive confirmation. Otherwise, a negative confirmation is sent to the CSM. We assume that all goes well. In step five, the CSM forwards the confirmation message received from the beneficiary bank to the originator bank. Before that, the CSM checks that the confirmation was received within the maximum execution time. Note that the confirmation can be positive or negative as mentioned before. And here we assume that everything is okay. Now let's look at the next step. The step number six is relevant only in the case where the CSM sends a positive confirmation message to the originator bank. Right after that, the CSM will send a final confirmation message to the beneficiary bank. That message provides the guarantee that the positive confirmation was delivered within the maximum 
execution tied to the debtor bank. In step seven, the beneficiary bank is sure that the SCT was processed correctly and within the maximum execution time. It makes the funds available to the beneficiary and sends him a notification, generally per SMS or per email. The beneficiary can immediately use the funds. The notification of the beneficiary is not mandatory according to the SCT INS scheme, but this is a truly value-added services for the beneficiary as he can make use of the funds immediately. The notification of the beneficiary is therefore a standard practice in the marketplace. Finally, we reach the step eight. The step eight can happen in parallel with step seven. The originator bank, after receiving the confirmation message from the CSM, processes it and informs its customer about the outcome of the instruction he sent. In case of negative confirmation, the scheme obliges the originator bank to inform its customer. If the confirmation is positive, the originator bank may not notify the originator. But in the marketplace, almost all debtor banks do send a notification in case of a positive confirmation, although the scheme does not require the customer to appreciate the service. All the steps that we went through must be performed in maximum 10 seconds. It is quite impressive to see everything that happens during the processing of an SCT INS transfer. There's a key point about the processing that we should all be aware of. It is the clearing and settlement. How are SCT INS transactions cleared and settled? That will be the topic of the next videos. That's the end of this presentation. If you found it useful, you can like the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also go to permanta.com and subscribe to the newsletter to receive regular updates about articles and video. Take care and see you soon on Permantor TV.